In fact, if uh, we're talking about bills of friends, now you give uh, Rob the gold medal for the traveling the longest, but I can't give you the gold medal for being the longest with bills of friends. There's somebody else in the room here in a red jacket right there. <laughs> she gets the gold medal. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have been associated with uh, the IADO for several decades now. What I'm amazing, I'm, as Mona pointed out, I'm from chemistry. Uh, so everything I have learned about this field has come from my association with IAD. And what amazes me most is every meeting, every Thursday seminar, you go there, no matter who is talking, there'll be this gentleman sitting down there. He has an opinion, he has a view on every subject. It just didn't <laughs> matter what. Okay. And I have been amazed by it. Of course, I've known Eric for a long time now. Uh, before I introduce him, uh, he is from the economics department, and we have Gary. Where's Gary? He's going to speak to us on behalf of the department with regard to Eric. Thank you very much. I'm going to be brief. Uh, Eric, uh, Kevin Halleck, who's the chair of the economics department, wasn't able to be here, but uh, he and I communicated and he asked that I say some words on behalf of the department. Uh, if Kevin were to walk in now, he would say something about the goals of the university, about research and teaching and outreach. And uh, uh, he wouldn't have heard all the wonderful things that have been said about you in the last day and a half. Uh, and he probably would have been redundant. So I'm not going to be redundant. I'm just going to say that in terms of research and teaching, that's what, that's what many professors do. To do as much outreach as you do is extraordinary. And I want to add one other thing. And that is, we have a remarkable achievement. And that is, two years ago, Cornell University formed a university-wide economics department between arts and sciences and ILR and scattered others. And what many of the people in the room probably don't know is the role that Eric played uh, long ago in setting that up. Uh, in 1969, the university was in complete chaos. Uh, and I wasn't here then. But uh, literally, uh, one part of the economics department walled itself off from the rest of the economics department. Uh, they, the people didn't get along. The university administration decided to bring in Eric as the outside chair of the economics department to make the place function. And four years, for four years, he did that. And the department was working remarkably smoothly uh, at, at that time when, when I came to Cornell. Well, it continued to work smoothly and more smoothly and more smoothly. And after a while, people got the idea of having these uh, different parts of the economics community that had been fighting bitterly uh, actually get together and form one department. And we are now one department. And Eric, you played a very important role in that. And so I just wanted to add that to what everybody else knows about Eric. And again, thank you so much for making this occasion possible. So Eric, before you get up here to make your final remarks, IAD has something to share with you. Uh, Jackie? So Eric, can you come up here? Professor Turpek, on behalf of the Institute and all the friends of Eric, we would like Thank to give this to much. you. Do, okay. do I have to open it now? Or? Yes, you can open okay. it now. <laughs> give me a minute to compose myself. <laughs> Scripture. <laughs> oh, 
for his lifelong contributions and dedication to the reduction of poverty on the occasion of a symposium in his honor held at Cornell University from the Institute for African Development. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, the first thing I should do is really thank uh, the uh, Institute for African Development and the AERC for this uh, occasion. Uh, I'm, I'm really truly humbled, and uh, I, I think uh, last night at the end of the uh, dinner, I mentioned that at my age, it's nice to be uh, stroked, you know. Uh, but there is such a thing as too much of it, and uh, I think I've reached a point where uh, I, I really feel embarrassed because so many of the things were said uh, 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 were uh, overblown and, and embellished, uh, and uh, I, I, I know that I don't deserve many of the uh, the things which uh, uh, were said of me. Uh, at the same time, uh, um, I will I will take it. I remember there was a <laughs> there was a, a program many many years ago, Queen for a Day. Well, I'm the king for a day, and uh, <laughs> tomorrow I'll wake up and uh, I'll be back and realize uh, all of my uh, many many uh, limitations. Uh, but anyway, I, I was trying to think of a uh, quote that would uh, capture, in some respects, the uh, essence of the uh, uh, symposium which we've had for the last two days. And I remembered listening uh, to uh, Charlie Rose. This was a couple of months ago. I was in California. Typically, I don't uh, listen to Charlie Rose. But Charla does it, and she told me, oh, Bill Gates is on. You should really come and listen. So I came, and uh, Charlie Rose asked Bill Gates, why is it that you spend all of this money on Africa? Why is it that you uh, are so concerned about uh, uh, helping the health, education, nutrition, and so on? And uh, his answer was, well, I really feel that uh, each life has the same value. And I think that, in many respects, captures what we have been doing. We, we want to value and respect each life, regardless if it's the poorest, most uneducated person or the richest, most educated one. So I think this, this might be, I think, a, uh, uh, a, a quote that I would like to uh, keep. Um, what I thought I would do, uh, and again, I'll try to be brief because you've been extremely patient, is to uh, spend just a, a couple of minutes on each of the presentations to capture the essence of these uh, presentations and maybe the lessons that we can learn from the presentations. Uh, James Foster uh, started, and uh, he uh, made a very strong uh, case for poverty being highly multidimensional. And I think uh, most of us would agree that uh, uh, we cannot think of poverty as a unidimensional concept. It has many, many dimensions. And he proceeded, after showing a dashboard of different poverty indicators, he proceeded to try to come up with a scalar yardstick. And that, of course, it's essentially arbitrary, because you have the problem of how do you weigh each one of the dimensions. You have the problem of uh, uh, what is the threshold, the poverty threshold, for each one of the dimensions. So it's inherently uh, arbitrary. Yet, I think it has some value uh, attempting to come up to, uh, with a, uh, a, a scalar uh, yardstick. And he did it in terms of uh, deprivations uh, and the number of deprivation, the proportion of deprivations. Again, arbitrary, but interesting. Uh, Sabina um, 
analyzed uh, the uh, 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 multidimensional poverty in a number of African countries. And uh, what we got, I think, out of it is that you can highlight not only <clears throat> those dimensions in which households are deprived, but also the intensity of the deprivation. So again, I think her contribution was that we can learn a, a great deal about the profile of poverty in at least a number of uh, African countries. Uh, Steve and David uh, did a very interesting paper on uh, uh, health improvement uh, incidence curve, and they applied it to three countries, uh, Cameroon, Madagascar, Uganda, and they expect to uh, apply it to a number of uh, additional uh, countries. Um, and what it shows is that health-wise, uh, at least proxied by standardized uh, uh, heights of uh, uh, children, uh, there has been progress. And in some respects, the progress has been greater than in terms of monetary poverty. Uh, Steve welcomed an appropriate acronym, and I'm going to propose one. It's, it's a very poor one, but let me propose it. It is Health Outcome Progress Estimates, which essentially turns out for hope. So uh, I'm sure you can do better than that. But uh, it's, uh, it's a beginning. Uh, Andy's, uh, Andy's presentation uh, on the uh, uh, growth, inequality, poverty nexus applied to uh, something like 24 African countries uh, for which uh, we had uh, country studies undertaken under the auspices of the African Economic Research uh, uh, Consortium uh, showed, I think, uh, quite clearly that the uh, um, growth elasticity of uh, poverty uh, is significantly lower in the African context than it is in other parts of the uh, uh, of the world. And uh, uh, he also uh, showed that uh, uh, the, there is no necessary high correlation between uh, non-monetary poverty indicators and poverty indicators. However, in those countries that were successful, uh, there appears to be uh, a case where these countries did well in, uh, uh, in uh, both. Um, at the end of his presentation, he raised a, uh, a very difficult issue, uh, and an issue that I think we economists haven't paid sufficient attention to, which is the uh, issue of uh, uh, the impact of fertility decline. Uh, on uh, poverty, on inequality, even on uh, growth. And the problem here is one of, of endogeneity. You have such uh, endogeneity that it's very difficult to know uh, in the analysis of this uh, circular type of uh, uh, relationship uh, where to, uh, to uh, start. Um, Fosu, Augustin Fosu, uh, came up with uh, a very detailed country-by-country -country analysis, again, of the uh, um, elasticity of uh, poverty vis-a-vis -vis growth, as well as the elasticity of poverty vis-a-vis -vis, uh, inequality. And again, what he showed was that uh, in the typical African context, uh, both uh, inequality and initial poverty uh, can be a filter uh, towards uh, greater po uh, poverty reduction in the, uh, uh, in the future. And, and here, I think, uh, one uh, point 
that was perhaps not sufficiently emphasized, but it's a point that Martin Revelian in a recent article in the American Economic Review has made on the basis of looking at a sample of about 100 countries. It is that high initial poverty can be a drag on future growth that uh, even more so than high initial inequality, it is high initial poverty that can reduce the, the rate of growth of uh, uh, poverty. Now the question is uh, why? And here again, we need much more research. Does it have to do with the, the uh, relatively poor quality of the educational system in many African countries? Uh, does it have to do with a very high uh, dropout rate? Uh, does it have something to do with uh, the, the neglect of agriculture? I think this is something which uh, we economists really need to, uh, to analyze. Uh, Jane, um, I think her contribution was to uh, show that uh, growth in Kenya on the whole has been uh, pro-poor. Uh, she also found out that the uh, ultra-poor benefited less than the uh, poor. Um, now, uh, it's, it's not entirely clear uh, whether the, the definition uh, of uh, uh, pro-poor uh, guides the results, because she mentioned that uh, Revelian and Chen found the opposite. Uh, my feeling is that uh, it has some, something to do with the definition. If you define uh, pro-poor as necessarily implying that the poor have to benefit relatively more from growth than the non-poor, which also implies that inequality is going to be reduced, then I think this is why growth in Kenya has been uh, pro-poor. Uh, 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 there are some policy implications which came out of uh, uh, Jane's uh, presentation. One is that uh, growth and mean income is uh, uh, inversely co correlated with uh, time to fetch water. Um, on the other hand, access to piped water is welfare improving. And again, in terms of policy uh, implications, she said maybe we need uh, subsidies to uh, uh, have easier access to uh, fuel so that poor households can uh, afford to uh, purchase fuel, and also maybe progressive water tariffs uh, for the poor to more easily uh, access water. I I'll come back to the issue of subsidies in just a minute uh, because there is a, a problem here. Uh, James Murphy talked about uh, ICT and uh, tourism, and uh, what I took away from it is that the, the role of tourism in a developing country is very different from that in a developed country. In a developed country, uh, most of the uh, employees in the tourism uh, industries tend to be minimum wage uh, people, and it tends to increase the, the gap the, the wage gap between the educated and the uh, uneducated, this is not necessarily so in a uh, uh, developing uh, country. On the other hand, um, as came out in the discussion, uh, the tourist industry in the developing countries is highly import intensive, so it's not quite clear if on a net basis uh, uh, tourism uh, is uh, uh, very desirable in terms of uh, its impact on uh, poverty reduction. Uh, Gary Fields, uh, Gary was so kind as to look back at, at an article that I had written in uh, the International Labor Review in 1973, which was an attempt to assess the uh, so-called high-level world employment missions in a number of uh, 
uh, developing countries. And uh, he went through the list of uh, uh, recommendations uh, to see how many of these were still valid today. Um, some of them were still, I think, quite valid today, others not. Um, and I think certainly one of them uh, was that the uh, informal sector still has to play a very important role in many developing countries. Uh, incidentally, the, the term informal sector was coined in Kenya it was born in Kenya. It was coined by uh, Dudley Sears, who was a leader of this uh, ILO high-level uh, mission to, uh, uh, to uh, Kenya. Um, he, uh, um, uh, 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 another, I think, uh, uh, point that he emphasized was that the emphasis which at that time was on basic needs, which you can translate into poverty reduction, is still, I think, the essence of, uh, of uh, development. So I think these were the, the, some of the main points that uh, Gary tried to make. Uh, Nicole uh, looked at uh, uh, the uh, impact of uh, subsidizing uh, inputs uh, in, uh, in agriculture, and more specifically, uh, hybrid maize uh, inputs uh, within the, uh, uh, the, the context of uh, uh, um, a couple of countries. And her conclusion was that if you look at the benefit-cost ratio, and of course that's always difficult because some of these costs are uh, direct costs, some are indirect costs, but she felt that the benefit-cost ratio would be uh, uh, above one, that uh, uh, essentially uh, it paid off to subsidize uh, hybrid maize. And what, what this brings up to my mind is the danger of what I would call policy fundamentalism. Uh, the World Bank for decades has had the position that uh, subsidies, any kind of subsidies, were bad. You shouldn't subsidize. And I was, uh, I mean, one of the advantages, there are many disadvantages at being as old as I am, but one of the advantages was that uh, um, I looked carefully at the Indonesian story in the 1970s. And in the 1970s, Indonesia uh, had these enormous uh, oil windfall profits. What was happening is that the price of oil after OPEC went up from, I don't know, $1 a barrel to $35 a barrel. And they had these enormous windfall profits, and they recycled some of these profits into agriculture, including fertilizer subsidies. And in over uh, an eight-year period, uh, Indonesia, that had been the largest uh, rice importing country in the world, in six or seven years became an actual exporter of rice. This was called the, the rice intensification period. So uh, the, 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 the lesson that I'm drawing out of this is that uh, uh, as economists, we, we, had, we, we ought to be very careful uh, not to become so wedded to certain doctrines and certain ideas that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we necessarily believe that uh, they are true even against uh, uh, empirical uh, evidence. Uh, the, uh, the next uh, uh, presentation with, was with Abebe and uh, um, it was a very interesting uh, attempt at uh, describing the uh, poverty dynamics in uh, uh, Ethiopia. Uh, what I got out of it is that uh, it may be slightly easier today to uh, uh, escape from poverty than it used to be, but uh, there are deep 
structural features which make uh, permanent escape out of uh, uh, poverty uh, still very, very uh, difficult. Uh, Haiyan uh, came up with a, uh, a new way of uh, coming up with a pseudo panel, uh, synthetic uh, panels. Uh, the first application of this methodology was to uh, Senegal, and he showed the characteristics of households that uh, could more easily escape poverty from those characteristics of households that uh, would essentially trap them into uh, poverty. Now, one, I had one question um, which has to do with uh, the churning uh, in the uh, income distribution. Uh, if, I, if I understood both uh, Abebe and uh, 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 Haiyan, uh, it seems to me that there was relatively little churning. And I remember a very interesting paper by uh, uh, Gay Fields on uh, Argentina where you showed an enormous churning in the uh, income distribution over a very short period of time. Now, it's true that this was at a time when Argentina was going through uh, a, uh, a major recession and then uh, improvement. So uh, maybe I missed it, but uh, um, is it correct that uh, there was relatively little churning in the income distribution, which I found somewhat uh, surprising, if that's the case. And then finally, uh, Rob, uh, um, what can I say? Uh, um, I, uh, I was flattered that you talked about uh, uh, structural pass analysis. Um, and I'm also glad that, that probably one of my last paper is going to be an attempt to incorporate time into structural pass analysis. So again, I'm losing my voice. Uh, um, I, uh, I have the beginning of a cold, but uh, I, I, I feel, I really feel embarrassed, but uh, I'm very happy and I thank you for this moment. that uh, uh, we should uh, not be making any more speeches, and I don't want to take away uh, anything that uh, Eric uh, has done, you know, in terms of an uh, excellent uh, uh, summary and uh, uh, presentation on what uh, went on. But I think I would just like to really uh, uh, thank um, many people that have made this uh, event uh, uh, possible, many people work in the background, and I think that uh, often we do not pay sufficient um, uh, attention to what they're doing for us. So I think we should really first, I would like again to thank um, you know, uh, sponsors and uh, uh, collaborator, you know, uh, uh, William and the AERC, and also the uh, uh, sponsors uh, that have contributed uh, very significantly to making this possible. Uh, here I'm uh, referring to the Clark Initiative, you know, for law uh, and development in the Middle East and North Africa, and then uh, the David Atkinson Center for Sustainable uh, Future, and the Institute for Social Sciences uh, here at Cornell, and also the United uh, Center. 
you've seen that the program has run very, very uh, efficiently, and I think we're on time in terms of uh, concluding our deliberations. Uh, and this is really, uh, I think, uh, uh, largely due to the discipline uh, of uh, uh, our speakers who have been excellent. So I think a special hand to our speakers for the excellent papers and also for keeping to time. And they could not have done that in terms of timing and uh, without the uh, help and guidance of the uh, moderators. So again, you know, thank you very much to all those that have been moderating in this uh, 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 process. And I'd like also to thank um, the you know uh, video team. I think uh, that uh, you've been quietly working behind our the room here. They videoed everything that has been going on here, and it will be available, in fact, uh, uh, soon after the uh, this conference. So thank you very much to. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, again thank my team from the IED, you know, Jackie Sayer uh, and the Evangeline Ray and the two uh, student workers, Morris and uh, Reed. Uh, you have been uh, excellent and you have done great work. Uh, from the time that we conceptualized this, I remember that uh, uh, I proposed this idea when William was here uh, on a, you know, doing something, I think he was uh, actually visiting the economics department, I believe, or yeah, and then we had a um, lunch in the Statland. You know, we started to talk about this, that, well, why don't we actually do uh, something like this? And I was delighted that, you know, uh, this uh, took off and that, uh, in fact, uh, this has come to be a reality. And I'm delighted also that we've been able to, you know, celebrate the work of Eric, uh, who we all agree has done you know, tremendous work and made a major contribution to the study of poverty, uh, especially as it relates to, uh, to Africa. So I think uh, we have all learned a great deal. This has been a very, very productive uh, um, two days. I think we all take away something. Uh, and a uh, lot of us, I mean, uh, who uh, might have been confused by the different views about you know, definition of poverty and all that. Uh, you know, I'm reminded one time I was sitting in a, a meeting and somebody was complaining that, uh, but all this stuff we've been saying is now very confusing. And said, well, at least now you are confused at a higher level you know, than uh, you were before. So I think that uh, it's really been extremely productive and uh, I thank all the speakers and all the moderators for this and I'd just like to wish you safe travels and also to our special group at the back, you know, from Hilton, safe travel to Hilton. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, we appreciate for having me here. <laughs>